Okay, welcome everyone to another one of my ZBrush tutorials. Today we're going to make a sword, and I'm going to go into my. I made one previously here. And let's see which one I'll show you. Uh, <clears throat> the one I plan on making here. I've got a lot of different tools here. Let's see. Sword, 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 sword. Sword, sword. Okay, the one I'm going to make today is going to look something like, no, that's not the right one. This is the one. I'm going to make one that has a scarred on it and a curved sword. So we're going to make one similar to this. And so I'm going to step you through how to do all this. Okay, so we're going to uh, go up here and go to Control N start a new canvas. <clears throat> now the way I've started this one, uh, to keep kind of keep things aligned, uh, I started with the handle, then I make the guard, then I put uh, I start up with the one handle and then the curved handle and then the guard and then I'll make the blade uh, last off. So <clears throat> to make this we're gonna start with the cylinder C D. You know what? I'm gonna start with the blade because that's the tricky part. And that's the one you want to, uh, we'll start with the blade. So we'll take this cylinder seat, cylinder 3D. We're going to go initialize it. We're going to take it all the way down as far division as you can go. And then we're going to decrease its Y width. So we wind up with something like that. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make this into a poly mesh. And I want to rotate this. So it's standing up, and we'll go to our transformation tool, pull it out a little bit, and then you do your rotation, hold down the shift to make it stick at 90 degrees. So now we've got this uh, little triangle here. This is the kind of be the primitive sword primitive we're going to use. <coughs> and uh, one of the important things I found out is pulling out the point. So what I did. I uh, use the move tool and I uh, decrease my draw size down to one and I go up in transformation and I do point select and what I did to get this kind of, kind of an orientation like I want we stand it up on top just a little bit and we pull it out hold down the shift to try to keep it aligned with the Z there I'm going to pull it out a little bit more and hold down a shift, keep the line. Because we want to get that shape on the end, you know, finished end. And we want to have a nice sharp blade, so we've got a nice sharp blade here. We're going to pull this out a little bit more. And that's about it right there. And then we want to pull it up like so. Now we've got a nice little shape for our blade. Let me get it reoriented here. And one of the things I found out recently in uh, ZBrush, what you can do here, you see how the grid lines are are not very opaque. Well, you can actually change that <coughs> if you can't see the lines like you want them. You can go down to draw, and you can change the opacity here, and you can bring it down your P line and uh, and we can do this like so and that will bring down the opacity and let's see how did I change it other changing uh, I think it was the RG well, I think it's RGB but anyway you can change this in here oh frame opacity that's what it's called frame opacity you can bring it down so it's not so bright. So you can change that if you can't see your reference lines very well. That's a new little trick to learn. So uh, anyway, back to the uh, what I was doing here. We want to. Uh, we've already got this made into a poly, so we're just going to go ahead and rename this, and uh, we'll call this a sword blade because we're going to do some more work on it. Like so. Now we've got it renamed as a sword blade. 
and we're going to go up to our geometry. We're going to divide it once, we're gonna, but we want to turn off the smooth for, first off. And then we want to delete this lower. And so now what we want to do, we want to kind of do some creasing here. So what you can do, you can hold down Control Shift, and you want to do the lasso. The lasso this portion here. We want this crease along this line here, because that's the way a blade is. It usually has a little, you can tell where it's been sharpened. So we go in here and we just hit crease. And now we'll have a nice little crease here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to divide this again. And again, and delete our lower. And if you want, you can, uh, you can crease along the top. You can make this surface, uh, but I'm not going to crease it. It seemed like I had a better result. So we're going to turn on the smooth again. And now we're getting something like more like we want. And it uh, looks like, uh, well, we could make some, we're, we're going to stretch this out. We're going to stretch this out along the z-axis. It's going to delete the lower. And we could flatten here if we wanted to. But I'm just going to move on with this tutorial to kind of get you started. So we're going to size this along the z-axis. And stretch it out quite a bit. So now we have our blade. You know, maybe I should step back here. I think I've got things upside down here. Uh, yeah, I had things upside down. We're going to move this point again. Yeah. This is the way we want our blade to look. I was a little bit off the target there. So yeah, now we want our point up like that. Good thing you got control Z in there. Always very helpful. Now we want to divide it and uh, delete our lower. We want to crease this line. We go to Control Shift. Sorry about that. We want to make the creases. We want to crease these surfaces here for our blade. So now we got our crease, and uh, we're going to divide this up a couple times. And now we can go and hit our smooth. And now we're getting something like we want. Of course, you can back up here a little bit. And if you want to, you can pull this in a little bit. Get your brush size up. You want to pull this in just a hair. It's getting a little crooked there. We can have a bigger brush size here. Maybe you can uh, do that just a little bit. Uh, I don't like that. We're going to keep it like this. So anyway, we're going to go to our Divide Smooth. We're going to delete our lower. And we're going to smooth things out. We're going to go with this. So you see, we've got a nice sharp point. We've got a little bit of a curve here. And uh, we'll stretch this out. And we'll go to our Deformation Size along the Z-axis. Looks like we're going to have a big long point on this thing. That's fine. Actually, we could uh, we could change that. We could mask this off so the uh, point wouldn't stretch. Maybe it helped to relax things a little bit. And uh, we'll mask this portion off. Maybe uh, we'll blur this a little bit. Now we'll stretch out our uh, size. We can do it with a move tool, which would be a little bit easier. We can control exactly where it's moving away from. Now we'll just move this. Hold down the shift key. That will give us a good point there. And the mask will help us uh, protect the, uh, the shape of our point there. Oop. Move this back some more. Move it all the way to the back. Shorten it up a tad. Hold, you know, hold down your shift key. And now. Now we've got a nice long sword. And we got our point like we want it. So we're going and uh, clear our mask. And 
we can do get outside, hold down control like we're going to mask. Just we'll relax the mesh a little bit. We'll do another uh, division here. We'll delete our lower. And now we'll relax our mesh. We'll divide again. Delete our lower. So now we got some uh, good detail here. Got a nice pointy sword there. Uh, check out, we'll preview it a little bit here with a silver foil. Okay, so we got our blade here. We'll go ahead and fill this with our material by holding, uh, selecting the MRGB channel and doing a fill color on that. So now we got our sword built. <clears throat> and now we're going to bring in a handle, one of the handles, or the uh, I don't know exactly how to call it. I'm going to just call this a handle. And then we're going to have our curved handle and then our guard, which I'll show you how to make. So we've got a sword blade. We're going to append another cylinder 3D here. And, uh, I had it on solo. Anyway, solo allows you to work on one part at a time. But we want to see this because we want to move this back. Select our PM. Let's we'll go ahead and rename this. We'll call it Sword Handle 1. Or we'll call this, uh, just call it Sword Handle. Alright. And so we can move this back to the position that we want it. Uh, extending our transform tool. In the circle, we're gonna get it back here. All right, and we're going to divide this up a little bit. And uh, lengthen it in the Z axis. Notice it moves there too. So we can, uh, we can move it back. position like so and we'll size it up some more and move it back in position like so and so we're getting a little bit of a start there we'll move it down a little bit what I want to do here is uh, we'll turn on our transparency hold down alt bring us back in the middle of the canvas and uh, as you can see, I got X and Y, I can see, so we're going to do a deformation in the X. Uh, we're going to do a deformation in the X, like so. And turn it around, hold on Alt. Maybe we should do a little bit of inflation on this. Give it some uh, bulk there. Maybe we can do some polishing here. So, we'll make this a uh, red wax material so we can uh, do some additional sculpting here. I want to add some features. I'll set up a little bit more. Oh. Let's see, if you polish too much, so we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and dynamis this. Because we won't be able to uh, polish like we want. So we're going to go down to our Dynamesh, and that's 256 is the number I like. And hit the Dynamesh. What does it say? No, we don't want to freeze it. Subdivision level. We don't need that. Do the projection. Alright, so we've got our Dynamesh. Now we can do some additional polishing on this. shouldn't and also you can just hold down shift and do this number and this is another smoothing type tool you got a lot of smoothing tools available here and uh, we'll polish it some more okay that should be enough of that so I want to mask 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull down a mass to the center <coughs> of this object. We're going to do something like this. Mass this off. We're going to blur this mask a little bit. This is just a personal preference for me. I mean, you could pretty much do what you want here. And we'll do a little bit of inflation. Maybe size this out a little bit. Oh, can't do that. Well, size that equal. Oh, can't do that. Probably because we have to reset the. Uh, okay, we'll take this mask off. I'm moving a little fast here. You go to transform, you can reset this pivot point. And now. Put our mask back on there, right there, blur a little bit. Now when we do our deformation here, it will come out at both ends. And maybe you want to do that number. And uh, clear our mask. And uh, definitely polish this up a bit. And then we can hold down shift and uh, polish some of this creasing out of it. We can uh, we can activate our symmetry on the Z and uh, get finished a little quicker here. Hold down the shift key, polish it up quite a bit. We'll do it some more. Get rid of this last little crease here. Of course, you can turn off your floor. See what you're doing. So then we've got this polished up. Maybe polish it up on the ends a little bit. With the smooth tool. Now we got something we want here. And right here, I'm just going to work from here. We'll move all this assembly down later. Uh, I have a brown texture. I mean, a, a leather texture I scanned earlier. So we're going to make this a basic material. And we're going to do a little spotlight. Uh, that's one of the cool features here in ZBrush. And I've got this texture, and we'll show you a little bit how to do this. I've already got this brown leather texture. And you can turn on your spotlight. And if you hold down your Z key, you can move this texture around, like so. And when you're ready to paint, you hit Z again. And this will apply this texture. Oop. Maybe I ought to, uh, let's see if I got a mask on. Oh, okay, that's not, I don't want Z add on it. What is going on here? Let's see. Having a little trouble with the spotlight here. Well, we'll get out of the transformation. We get out of the point select. Huh? Well, let me see what's going on here. I don't know why. Oh, I've got the move tool on. No wonder. So we'll go to uh, B, S, and that will take us to our standard tool. Huh? We'll go to our standard tool. Turn back our ZBrush on, and maybe I'll have some luck here. And I can still do our symmetry. Hitting Z. Oh, I don't want Z add though. Now, there we go. Now we're getting this texture on here. Like so. I had to get out of the move tool. Alright, so you can hit Shift Z. And now we got this, uh, got our brown texture on there. Our little brown leather texture. So we'll keep working along here. I want, next thing I want to make is the guard. And we're just going to go ahead and append a 3D cylinder again. Mm. All right, so you can uh, turn your transformation off, or you can leave transparency on. Uh, <coughs> we'll go ahead and resize this just a tad. We can uh, get our deformation. Size this up a bit, like 
so. And now what I want to do is kind of make this uh, a little flat in the Z. So we're going to uh, go down kind of small here. I think that's enough. And uh, we'll <coughs> we can just uh, divide this just a few times to make it smooth. Go to our geometry, divide, divide, lift lower. And we'll just go ahead and mess this while we're in here. 256. Like so. Down and mesh it. Projection in progress. And here we go. So I'm gonna show you how to make how I made this guard. It's kind of a neat little trick here. Alright, so we got our diner mesh, and we can confirm that by holding down shift F. But anyway, for the deformation, you can use gravity and the Z axis, and you can get a nice little shape like so. Like and uh, can polish this up a little bit. Like so. And uh, we'll go ahead and put a silver foil on it. We'll just go ahead and fill this. I don't want to be real long doing this I'm just kind of kind of giving you the basics on how to get this you can uh, you can go in and add a few I'll, I'll add a few details here we'll go solo here temporarily and I'll show you a few little tricks to add some details to your guard <coughs> so you go down to control and you got your square stroke or you get your circular stroke and you want square and center now you can turn on one of your floors which I believe this is the X no it's Z We'll turn on the Z, and so we can use the grid a little bit. And we got our circle selected. We got square and center, so you can make a mask like so. Drag it out from the center, pull it up. Now what you want to do is hold down Control Alt to reverse your mask, and it is a little bit off center. So you can pull it in by holding down the space bar simultaneously. Like so. Hold on. I see. I got the space bar and control and all, all at the same time. So we'll get that. We'll call that good right there. So now we got this part mass off. Just this little ring. And what you can do, you can go in. You can inverse this. And we'll size from the Z. Resize. In deformation. And you can pull out a little ridge here. It helps if you blur this a little bit. It takes off the uh, that uh, noise. We'll blur that a little bit. Do it twice. Now we plot our Z the other way, like so. We want a little ridge there. So we got a little ridge there now, and uh, we can take our mask off. You can actually go in and make it a different color if you like, uh, but I'm just going to leave it like so. And that's one little way you can. Uh, Add a little, a little bit of a detail to your guard now. So we're going to come out of the solo here. So we're out of the solo. And what I want to work on next is the, uh, the curved handle of the sword. I want to move this. We're just going to leave everything in place until we get ready to line up everything else. So we're going to go in and we're going to make our curved handle. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a ring 3D. And I want to... Uh, we want to orient this like the rest of our sword, but first we're going to initialize this ring a little bit before we turn it into a poly mesh. Uh, oh, yeah, I want to do the scale. I want to do the coverage. I only want half a ring, and uh, put in 180. That will just give us one half of a ring, and uh, maybe divide it up a little bit, make it a little prettier. Turn it into a poly mesh. Now the rest of our sword is pointing toward the Z so before we uh, pin it in our sub tools we can go ahead and turn this thing around and get a rotation.
rotation tool right there and uh, turn around like that. Now it's going to be oriented in the position that we want. Uh, maybe scale this up a little bit. A tad like that. Like so. Now we'll just go ahead and uh, we'll append this to the rest of our collection of tools here. And they got this PMB through ring, so we'll append it. And see now it's oriented like we want it. So we're not doing any additional rotations. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and down and match this. We're gonna stretch this thing around and uh, maybe uh, stretch it out a little bit in the Z. Actually, I got a little too fat. I could have done it back when I initialized it, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get something out of this. We'll uh, do some deformations. Maybe do a Y deformation. Flatten the thing out. We can also do it going in with it and do some additional transformations with our transform tool. But I'm going to kind of squeeze this down a little bit. And then we're going to uh, poly mesh it, do some uh, additional deformations. So now we got something like this. So what I could do, we could just go ahead and do our transformation. And while we got it positioned, what we can do here is you can put on your transform tool. This is kind of a handy trick here. And you go to your center ring in your transformation tool, you hold down the Alt key, and you can do this number. And of course, if you don't, if you want that to be a slider curve, you can uh, move out your ring ends on your translation tool and bring it back to the center there, like so. And now it's going to be a little more subtle, but that's a little much. We'll Control Z, and we'll bring this in a little closer. Maybe just spit a little bit out to the south side. And of course, you got those little uh, tick marks there you can use to gauge it. And uh, get it in the center there. Hold down the Alt key and do that number. Okay. So, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, make this a uh, Dynamesh. Make sure we still got it selected. We can go solo. Just make sure we stay on the right path there. And. Uh, We'll uh, do our 256. It's one of my favorite numbers there. We'll do our projection. <clears throat> now, I'm going to switch back to the matte cap red wax temporarily. So we can. Uh, now we'll go back to our mass. We'll do a rectangle and we'll do just the center. And we'll do this number like so and we'll blur this just a tad we'll blur this up blurring uh, kind of takes a little bit of the noise out of it when you do your deformations inversely so now we've got our X here so we want to do a deformation along the X like so We're going to have to reset that point again. But you can, uh, we got to take our mask off to do this. We'll go up to transform, we'll go to reset the pivot. Now, we'll go back and do our mask again. Like so. Make it a little bigger. Like that. Now, we'll blur this. Invert it. Now we can do our deformation about the X. I'm not on. Hmm. Can't understand why I'm not. Okay. We'll clear this mask out again. We'll just have to move the whole thing to the center. Again. Uh -huh. 
do our defamation about the X again. There we go. That's what I want. Something like that. Maybe do a Y. Get it uh, now. We can take our mask off. Clear it. And uh, polish it up a little bit. I want to do the shift uh, smooth tool also. Get some of this noise out of here. Come back creasing. Now, let's see, we've moved everything around, so. Oh, you know, no loss there. We can scale this down a little bit. <coughs> it's just a matter of, uh, you know, you do Z brush long enough and you move, you move around, find out what you can do, what you can't. The best way, maybe I'm going to this a little quick, but uh, trying to get you up and started. We can uh, play with this. And da, 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 da. I want to, to size this out. We can also scale with the transformation tool. So you can uh, hit the scale up there. So, and then tap on here, we can scale it down a little bit this way. And we can also go, we can do some additional uh, sizing and resizing in a handle, but we'll get it all together here eventually. Uh, I'm going to move down the portion to kind of hide that part. And I'm going to go in and uh, do some more of this alt in the center of our transformation tool. Get this curve up a little bit. Uh, we'll pull out our circles just a tad. We'll pull down the all. I wanna, there we go, something like that. And then we can scale somewhat there. Maybe if we move the scale to the center, better scale. There we go. Yeah, I want to scale that center. So now we've got, of course I'm going to move this down a little bit. So I tap the wire, hold down ship. Yeah. Okay, that's good enough. So we've played around with that enough. Now we're going to arrange our pieces here. I'll go ahead and make this a silver foil. Like so, we'll fill it. Fill that object and we'll get the rest of this. We'll turn off our transparency uh, temporarily. And I'm going to move some of this stuff back. So I'm going to move my handle back, my first handle. And of course we can go ahead and rename this the curved handle. Uh, there we go. Curved handle. Did it take that? No, I don't think it took that. Had that slash mark in there. Now, now we got curved handle. So we're going to move back our. Oop, I'm going to turn up a transformation. Now, I'm going to pull this down. And uh, hold on shift, move our handle back down over here. And, uh, go to our guard. Which we didn't rename. We'll go ahead and rename that. It's helpful to rename all these subtools because if you get a really complex model, you can get lost. So it is helpful to name these things. Uh, you know, it's good to be keep it organized. So we'll pull this down right here, right about there. And I think we're going to stretch out our hand. We'll go ahead and move our curved handle down while we're at it. Get everything in place. I want to stretch this, the sword handle out in the Z. And we'll go to our deformation. Let's sign uh, it up a little bit. Go back with our transformation tool. And we'll pull 
it in like so. Now, just a little bit out from the uh, guard. We'll zoom in and see what we can do with this curved handle. It's, uh, we see you can pull out your transformation tool on that. Uh, I want to move it down. Of it helps if you get it right in the center. And we'll now, uh, figure out where we're at. Pull our circle here a little bit. We want to hide those extenuating extensive part. That looks a, a little bit. We're going to do some more deformations on that, definitely. Uh, we're going to scale about the center. And get this a little bigger. And I think what we'll do, we'll scale it. Flatten it out a little bit. I think we're going to have to go into the deformation panel because it's sticking out there at the bottom. We could flatten that. We could do that. We could do a flatten. Let's turn on transparency. We could flatten that off. Okay. So we'll need to flatten on the uh, Y. We can go to our flatten information. Let's see how this works. There we go. Kind of cut this stuff off. We don't need all that excessive. Uh, it's only going up to the Z. Well, that, that leaves a nasty. I think it'd be better just to uh, do a deformation in this case. Now, uh, I think what we'll do, size that down. I didn't get this handle exactly like I wanted it, but I think we can work within transformation tool here and uh, get what we want. We'll do the uh, ooh, add a couple of ticks like so. What is that? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. All right, we'll do that number. Now this looks a little better. Yeah, I think we can go with that. Come on, diddles. One more time. I think that'll work. Uh, I'd sure like to chop off that last little bit. Let's see if we can uh, flatten this without it getting real. Uh, it's not going to work. Anyway, we'll go with this for now. I mean, you could spend extra time shaping this handle up, but uh, I'm going to just kind of give it a uh, over cursory uh, finish here. We'll uh, size up this uh, the guard here. We'll do all three axes, and then we'll pull it back in place. Maybe we can uh, make one more adjustment on that handle. <clears throat> Perhaps one more adjustment. Move it back. And then we'll move our curved handle back a little bit. Like so. Okay, I'm going to call it good. We're going to turn off the transparency here. So you see we've got our sword going on there. Uh, that's about all I really wanted to show you. Now, I want to do one more thing with the blade. That's what I, that's what I was going to blade. Like one more finishing touch on the blade. We're going to scale it up in the Y. We're going to fatten it up on the Y. They won't forget about that. We'll just do this number. And then we'll take our transformation tool. Transformation tool is so handy. We can uh, get a lot done. We'll just move her up just a tad. Now this is the finishing touch I want to put on this. 
<coughs> and maybe one more. We're going to do that alt uh, center transformation that I like so much. <coughs> We're going to kind of, we'll turn on the transparency to see where our end is. We'll drag that out. Oh, let's re drag out. We'll drag out circle to circle. It's a little bit crooked here. Try to get it straight. We'll go circle to circle here. And then we'll uh, hold down on. First, you go inside the middle circle. And you can do that number. Give it just a little bit of a curve. And then, just a slight rotation. And uh, I think we'll call it finished. So there's your sword. Uh, I guess kind of a confederate type sword. And I believe the handle. Yeah. Okay. That's, I think, yeah, I had an issue with this. Maybe this should be upside down. Maybe you should mirror that. Let's try that. You can uh, you can mirror this uh, handle, and we're going to mirror it along the Y. We'll just see what happens here. Got to go into deformation, and you can uh, see if that looks any better. I think that's the way it's done. You can mirror it down. I believe that's the correct way. So anyway, uh, that's your sword. We'll do a quick little render here. We're going to uh, render it on the X floor. That's our back plane. So uh, <coughs> we'll go into uh, size up our grid again. Turn on our perspective. And uh, we'll turn it off temporarily. What you can do, what I'll do is you can go down and merge all this. By going to your um, your sub tool master, and I'm just gonna stick it all together, and we're gonna say merge. And we're just gonna bring it on down. We'll turn off all the different parts. So now we've got a merge sword, and I want to uh, maybe lay it on the side. We can do a rotation here. We want to bring that point down as if uh, gravity would pull it down. We'll shorten this up here a little bit. And you can do this number. Oh, I've still got something on here. We've still got that one part visible up there. Now, we can. Um, <coughs> And we'll call that the center of gravity, I guess. Can, uh, lay the sword down on the floor. Like so. And maybe it would be, if you were laying the sword down, maybe it would roll back a tad itself. Like so. Get down here, bring this down a little bit. Right, so I think our points, no, our points not sticking to the floor. Okay, so we'll call this a uh, completed project, and I've got it rendering at 1920 by 1080. That's kind of a high D image. Uh, we'll lighten up the background a little bit. We'll uh, move some lights around here. And we'll go down to our document. You go to your back, slide down here like so. That'll give you a nice bright floor. Here's our test render. <coughs> and of course you can go in here and you can change the property. Do smooth normals, soft Z, soft RGB, and play with the shadow. Get the shadow not so strong. <laughs> Turn down the F strength here. Put a little angle on it. About 20. And this will be our completed sword. So thank you so much for watching my software tutorials.
I'll be doing more in the future. So stay tuned. And anyway, uh, I'm out of here, and thanks for listening and watching.